if this dream is working now. That's not what I wanted to click. Do, do, do. Okay, let's start this up. Select an episode. <clears throat> J.P. Penny. Ah, uh, would you like to see notifications when Marty has a new goal? Sure. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Jack, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. All right, we got that famous line. Watch this, watch this. It's an this. interesting way to open the game. Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ah, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. But where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me <laughs> you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush espresso. Look out! I keep choosing the choices that are direct quotes of the uh, movie. 
I'm curious to know what would happen if I chose a different one, but at the same time, I want to keep choosing the quotes. Should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, what happened, Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Okay. Doc needs his notebook. Okay. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Can I? How do I talk to you? No time to talk now, Marty. Go to the toolbox and get that notebook. So let's see. Is this the Twin Pines Mall or not? I don't really want to select the toolbox. I definitely don't need these guides. Let me turn those hints off. Uh, zero. I hate use pop. Goals pop up. That's what I want off. Oh no, maybe that is a hint then. Get it off my screen. Whatever. Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared. And the flux dispersal rate is inversely proportional to... Doc, uh, something's way off here. Uh, Doc? Alright, Twin Pines Mall. Great Scott! He's going Doc, see through. I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Um, I got a picture of the clock. That's interesting. Okay? Weird science. Yeah, mom. I it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Oh snap! It is the picture of the cowboys. Well, oh, that's great. Sound now, back in good old 1986. 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Hmm. Jules Verne. All right. Jules Verne was a, that's a reference to the third Back to the Future. That model was also a reference to the first. All these clocks reference to the first. Amplifier reference to the first. Pretty much his lab is the same as it used to be. In the in uh, the first movie, except that amplifier got amplifier got blown out. Oh, he's selling it. Dad, are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. 
you wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc's stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And, hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Oh, Biff. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any <laughs> treasure. That was that was that was back in time on the uh, jukebox, just... which is a direct reference to the first movie. Very good opening song for that movie. All right. I miss Einstein. Oh. oh. A little hard to navigate. Hey, let me. Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. D sorry, Marty. Okay, so this is the universe where Biff did not win and Marty's dad is courageous and punched him. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. Why the heck would he take one of them with him? Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? <laughs> okay, well that's talking about the first one. He's dead. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it. But Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. I have not looked Maybe at the Maybe you model should try yet. to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. What's Biff doing here? He wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. Uh... To tell him about the dreams. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just <laughs> weird stuff yeah, about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but I feel like it was telling me something. I'll keep right. looking around. Thanks, Dad. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Okay. Let's no, make some know. noise. Oh, no. Oh, I got. Can I? Can I it do it? Took me forever to repair this thing after I blew oh. it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Is there any kind of guitar or anything? I don't know what Looks that like is. Looks like a hand crank lightning rod, or maybe a lightning powered pencil sharpener. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley, way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? 
This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something.